Hello and a very warm welcome to our weekly cultural diary, Colors of India. I'm your host, Tina Jha. Not many of us know about the diverse culture and vivid traditions of our Northeast. And that's why on our show today, we give you an opportunity to gain first-hand knowledge of this culturally rich region. But before that, a quick look on the other highlights on the show this week. A wonderful blend of sitar and guitar. Krishna's eternal story retold through Kathak and remembering Saint Nicholas. Over the last two years, the Northeastern Festival in the capital has become a brand, unifying stakeholders of the seven sister states under one single dynamic platform. The second edition of the festival held recently in the capital once again showcased the myriad vibrant facets of this region. Take a look. Atmosphere connecting people celebrating life. The Northeast Festival at the Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts in the heart of the national capital showcased the culture of a special little known region of India. The first to go was a band performance by Footwings. The highlight was a special dedication titled Woman. This is one platform where different parts of people from all parts, just I mean, starting from northeast, but other people from here are coming. So it's a good platform to just spread that, you know, that spirit of brotherhood, and diversity, and you know, unity and diversity that we, we proclaim in India. So it's a good platform for that. Another aspect: folk dancers from Manipur, each one a big hit. Cholam, a classical dance from Manipur. Dancers play the pung, a form of hand-beaten drum, while they dance at the same time. Next, Dhol Cholam. A drum dance which is one of the dances performed during Holi in Manipur. It is really different and a nice experience to actually experience something which like which lies miles away from Delhi and we generally don't come across these events so easily so yes it's a good it's a good initiative to at least uh, you know make or mix cultures and here's another big favorite the yakcham dance is performed by male artists under the command of a herdsman showing the utility of the yak for a common man living in high altitude areas amazing it's a very nice opportunity to actually interact and know what exactly they feel and it's a different culture but it's just that it's 
being the Indian culture, but we are not aware of it. So it's a nice platform and a nice initiative to know know about them. And finally, the famous Chirau dance, a huge attraction during festive occasions in Mizoram. The male dancers move the bamboo staves, and the female dancers perform by stepping in and out of the bamboo blocks. People don't know much about Northeast India because you know, uh, like they don't probably they don't did not study about you know Northeast in uh, their books, uh, this that you know in the schools, colleges, institutions. So this way, like you know, uh, right now we're just uh, trying to impart knowledge about Northeast India. These are glimpses of another way of life and living. Another culture, another heritage, so distant from what we know. Yet it's as Indian as we are, rejoicing the colours of diversity that this country stands for. indeed brought to the capital a carefully chosen bouquet of what is the best in the region. And what an entertaining way to create awareness about the country's rich diversity, a colourful reflection of the northeast and the people living there. On that note, we slip into a very short break on the programme. There's much lined up for you on the other side. Do stay with us. Coming up after the break, a fusion for music lovers and Krishna's eternal story retold through Kathak. Welcome back after the break. The national capital was recently treated to an evening of music and magic symbolized by a traditional and a western instrument. Take a look at this duo performance organized at the India Habitat Center. blend and a memorable evening indeed. A sitar and guitar duet by Hindul Deb and Max Kluth created rhythmic patterns to connect people, a unique mode of refreshment. Sitar is uh, now one of the most popular Indian traditional instrument. The history is not uh, very far, but uh, so far the musicians, the artists who have uh, taken forth this instrument to spread it, uh, uh, the information about this instrument to the world, they have been so big that this instrument in a very short period of time has been accepted as uh, the, one of the most popular instruments of India. The first composition titled Shahana, an Indian classical rag connected with rag Bageshwari and Bhim Palasi. The notes in ascending and descending scale do not follow a strict progression, lending a unique beauty to this rhythm. This was, um, this was the prime concern for us that we wanted to have something very minimal 
and uh, melodic and uh, a lot of free improvisation which would not be possible if we have uh, three or four or five uh, people together. Up next, the flamenco music from Spain. Valeria, a fast flamenco rhythm having 12 beats, has derived its name from the Spanish word burler, meaning to mock. Our duo is basically our attempt to, to join music cultures from the East and the West with the sitar representing Eastern Indian music and the guitar which is almost like a symbol for Western music. So what we're trying to do is not fusing ragas with whatever but we're actually trying to create something new. The third to go was a solo performance by Max Kluth. The German who had flown into New Delhi specially for this event dedicated this piece to his daughter. My instrument uh, it's called the Lotus guitar and it's basically a double neck acoustic guitar that was uh, very much inspired by Indian instruments such as the sarod and the sitar but uh, it's still a guitar which was built by uh, a luthier in Germany a friend of mine Philipp Neumann and um, so I'm still discovering whatever music is in the instrument I have it for three years now but I'm still learning and finally a very much a highlight of the evening a sitar guitar jugalbandi that had a mesmerizing impact what this evening conveyed above all was the single language of music whatever the instrument whatever the voice or language only those notes and their brilliance matter The instrumental music reflects a high degree of rhythmic sophistication and artistry. And not to say it was quite popular among the audience. In our next segment now, we bring you a unique presentation of the Krishna Ras via the medium of Kathak dance. This performance highlights the sheer breadth and variety of the dance form while bringing forth the beauty of the Krishna Ras. Take a look. Kathak dancer Richa Jain is back with another enthralling performance. This one is titled Krishna Mai, a concept that highlights the elements of Ras Leela in Kathak style of dance. and it transports audiences to a realm of magic. Krishnamayi uh, is a concept where we 
enhance or depict uh, the amalgamation of Kathak and Ras Leela. As we all know, Ras Leela was run by Lord Krishna. So during the 16th century, uh, we do have evidence of an interchange or an exchange of these two dance forms. And Kathak inherited a lot of things from Ras Leela. So today, today we make a humble effort to portray those elements like the nutvari bowls are taken from the ras and we have the gat nikas or the gat bhav where we you know we talk about the love of radha and krishna and we have uh, the tatkar and different types of spins which kathak inherited from ras The Ras Leela or dance is part of the traditional story of Krishna described in Hindu scriptures where he dances with Radha and her friends. Classical dance Kathak evolved from the Ras Leela of Braj and Manipuri classical dance and was revived in the 1960s. Legend has it that there was an exchange between these two dance forms sometime in the 16th century, each borrowing heavily from the other. special part about Richa is that she can sing beautifully and dance which is a very rare combination and I think it's a treat for the audience to be able to see a dancer sing live on stage and dance. The way Richa has worked on it, it's showing her hard work, her talent and I've seen Richa dance for many years. She's really grown into a beautiful dancer and choreographer and singer. Richa's performances are an elegant blend of the Lucknowi, Jaipuri and Banarasi gharanas of Kathak and she looks beyond the dance form itself. Richa is a trained Kathak dancer and a qualified Hindustani classical vocalist and she's able to blend the two, singing and dancing simultaneously.
we have made Krishna as the base and included the Ras and there is another item which is Krishna Mahi Gunagavi. So what we have done is it's based on Kathak dance, style of Kathak dance and uh, what we are doing is putting in the tatkar and footwork and everything but the song will be Bhai Krishna Mai Gunagave. So basically it is based on Krishna mixed up with the Kathak style of dancing. <laughs> And adding a special charm, Richard's team of accompanists, performers and instrumentalists who leave the audience mesmerized with their performance. <laughs> Leaving the audience asking for more, this performance was a welcome taste of singing and dancing. On that note, time for us to slip into another short break. There's much more on the program. Don't go anywhere. After the break, patron Saint Nicholas drives a vintage car. Details to follow after this quick break, don't go anywhere. Welcome back after the break. On 6th of December every year, Germans across the world remember Nicholas of Myra, the patron saint of little children, students, merchants and sailors. We bring you glimpses of the memorial event organized at the German Embassy in New Delhi. German ambassador to India, Michael Steiner, and his wife, Eddie Steiner, welcomed Nikolaus into their home last week. Since 17 years, we have this Nikolaus party. Today, the 6th of December, uh, it's uh, a festivity all over in Germany. The good thing is that we have Indian kids from the Hope Project, uh, also from other uh, projects here, and kids from the German school uh, all get uh, a little gift. And um, it is a tradition which we follow. Kids are all the same. Uh, kids want to play. Kids want to receive gifts, uh, kid, kids want to have warmth, and kids want to learn. And they're all the same whether they come from Germany, from India, or from elsewhere. And in a way, I think the real point is that we find, have to find a way uh, that we remain kids too. In a break from tradition, Nicholas arrived onto the residence lawns, not riding an elephant but in a vintage car from 1940, owned by the former Maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir. Present on the occasion, some 500 kids from all walks of life, school children and NGO volunteers to ring in the Christmas festivities. Stay shows added fresh magic to the event. It was very nice. We uh, we had gifts, and everybody knows that mostly the ambassador is the Santa, but this year it wasn't. So um, the party was very nice. The songs were very nice, and yes, I thought the party was very nice, and I liked that we got presents, and all the songs were very very nice, and um, uh, it was nice how the um, Nick, how the Santa. The Nikolaus came to, to, to visit us in the car and I liked it how he gave us the presents and yeah, it was very, very nice. Followed by a performance by students from Springdale School. And the Christmas season would be incomplete without gifts and sharing. And continuing the tradition, each child at the event received a gift from Nikolaus. 
St. Nicholas Day is one of the happiest cultural traditions that the world has taken from German culture. And Nicholas is said to be that figure who eventually evolved into modern day Santa Claus. On that note, time for me to wrap up this episode of Colors of India. We promise to see you same time next week with another bunch of exciting and colorful stories. Until then, take very good care. Goodbye.